everyone, Brett here with The Tuning School, and welcome back to another episode of Tech Tips. Today, we're looking at a 2015 Camaro, um, and this particular customer said that the vehicle idle hunts, and he says, I went into the scanner and tried moving the timing, nothing happened, and I tried airflow in the scanner, it still hunts, not sure what to do. Uh, and so I went ahead and downloaded the customer's tune file, which will go and open. And we'll kind of go through the process of looking at this. And so if I head over here to my downloads folder, I'm going to grab it. Now, when it comes to um, any technical support related stuff, um, pretty much out of the gate, I'm going to check this file against a stock file to see what the customer has done. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what vehicle this is. It's a 2015 Camaro 2SS, and I'm going to see what the operating system is, which is right here. Um, from there, I'm going to open up a compare file, and I'm going to locate a vehicle of the same year, the same model, and I'm going to find a matching operating system as well. And as you can see here, I've got this guy, and I've got um, this option here, which is going to be the exact match. And so once I go ahead and double-click on that, the very first thing I do when anybody's talking to me about an idle oscillation issue is I'm going to go to their spark section, and I'm going to go to their idle overspeed and under speed tables. And I'm going to open up these two tables. And what you're going to find oftentimes is a table that looks like this. So what the way that these tables work is this says when our um, idle is over our target speed, we can remove two degrees of timing to try to bring it back down. Um, and it says when our idle is under our target, our under speed table, we can um, add two degrees to try to bring our idle back up. And so if we head back over here and we grab the customer scan file, we'll kind of get a look at what this condition is actually going to look like um, when it is hunting and when you do set it up that way. And it's going to look like this. As you can see, we have very, um, very aggressive uh, idle oscillation. It's very visible in this customer's RPM line. And this is directly caused from the changes he made to this table. Now, our course material does tell you to do something very similar to this. Um, it is not necessarily too outside of the realm of the ordinary for you to either get advice from our book that says this or to see other things online about it. But the reality is what you're causing here is a very large problem for your vehicle. And so in order to control the idle RPM, the vehicle's primary way to do that is going to be ignition timing. Now it's going to use that ignition timing because it's the easiest way to control the RPM of our engine. If you've clamped down the vehicle's ability to do that, like you can see here, so stock would look much more like this and, and so we're looking at when our idle RPM, for example, is 48 degrees, um, uh, sorry, 48 RPM under, we can add six degrees. And when it's 48 degrees over, we can pull out five degrees. And so we're looking at something a little, almost 12 degrees worth of swing that the customer has brought down to four. Um, and so you've, he significantly um, clamped uh, it's uh, ability to use spark advance down. And so what's happening, it's a little hard to see, but what has to take over instead is our throttle. You notice our throttle is opening and closing and opening and closing. And the reality is the throttle blade is not effective at controlling the idle RPM. It's just going to fight itself and cause our, all sorts of issues. Now, the reason customers are doing this usually is to try to get their cammed vehicle to idle more like stock, but you can take things too far like you see here and you've completely taken away its ability to have a smooth idle. So the solution for this customer and this particular case was I took his tables and I set them back to stock. So I'm now looking at the differences between the main and the compare, and I'm going to make the differences zero. And I'm going to do the same thing for here and make the differences zero. And then at this point, I would save this tune file. You can see if we go back to our main file, it's now back to stock. I would save this. Uh, or I did save this and sent this to the customer, and this is going to get his idle issue completely fixed and taken care of. And so keep in mind, if you want to try to bring those values down, you can. I don't recommend that you're going to do that in most cases. Really, honestly, they typically are going to idle much better if you do not bring them down. Um, but if you are going to insist on doing so, going so low and giving it such a small window is going to create that idle oscillation.